Hello and welcome back to the Powder of Podcast. Uh, one of the feedback feedbacks that we keep getting <laughs> in our comment section is that we should invite more guests. So here yeah. we have Sanam with us. Sanam is a professional drifter. That's yeah. the simplest way yes. uh, in which I can explain <laughs> Sanam yeah. uh, to you guys. But right. of course, we're gonna talk to you about drifting yeah. as a culture and yeah. you know your cars, right. how you got into it, stuff like that. But before yeah. we get into that, yeah. I just want to remind the audience that our podcast is available on all podcasting platforms and of course in the video format on YouTube and if you want to listen to more such podcasts, please do drop in a comment and let us know on what you want to listen to. So finally, Sanam, yes. welcome to the Powder Podcast. Thank you. I've been wanting to get you on the podcast for the longest time, man. It just uh, worked out well this time, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The timing yeah. and yeah. Yeah. you know, we're recording this on the 15th of May and tomorrow uh, is the underground, yeah. is the underground <laughs> yeah, event. Yeah. And are you going to be uh, yes, I will be there. Riding a few cars? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll close pillars, but yeah, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Should okay. be fun. Super man. Yeah. Sanam, yeah. I think we'll, you know, get straight to the point in yeah. terms of what you do. You're a professional yeah. drifter. Yes. How did this happen? So, um, I was, uh, so my dad was in the army. So all this was like, um, What's the point of it? But also it comes from the fact that he was also rallying. He's won the Himalayan rally a couple of times. And uh, then he represented the country uh, in Germany, UK and other places for rallying itself. So the convincing part was a little uh, easy, but you know, nothing's really easy when it does in the army. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, then I was sent to Singapore to study. Uh, then thinking that this is uh, probably going to keep me away from all that but then I started karting there okay. and uh, I was mostly doing uh, endurance races which were a lot of fun because mm. I feel uh, I mean they were just fun I found them more fun actually and uh, so they had a lot these of were local endurance races oh uh, yes yes, okay. yes so they had a lot of uh, night races happening on there because mm. that's the time they would probably do like 6 hours 12 hours all that stuff Wow. So it's good fun. And uh, so they are, in that time, they had recently built the F1 track also, the mm. street circuit there. So they so there's one area where they have their pits and all. I think that uh, structure stays permanent. Okay. So they also used to do uh, small drifting events over there, which was about uh, 15 minutes from my uh, place where I was staying and my college. So a couple of events I saw, there was like, hmm, this looks a little, you know, uh, doable. doable yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like, yeah, why not? This looks like, you know, you're on the edge. You seems like you're out of control, but you are still in control. It's like, uh, you know, the uh, the point of doing it was, it, I, I feel that like it gives you more kicks. But uh, yeah, then I, then I did a couple of rallies here. Then I did drifting. Then this, then there's a lot of precision driving for TVCs and, you know, all that stuff going on. But yeah, then this is majority which has been happening back and fro. Right. Yeah. I want to turn back the clock a little. Yeah. <laughs> and just want to take you back in time. Right. Where are you from? I'm from Chandigarh. You're born and brought up. Yeah, but I've hardly been home. I've been in my, I've been in the hostel. I've been out of the house. I've been kicked out of school sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but yeah, it was uh, good fun. I was, uh, so I was in Mayo for the longest time. Okay. And uh, what uh, is Mayo? Uh, Mayo College, a uh, school. Ajmer. Okay, I'm yeah. unaware. Huh. Yeah, so, I was there for the longest time. And uh, I guess I would have been kicked off from there also if I was not good at sports. So, they ah, kept okay. me like... Yeah. Close, so, you've always been like an athlete also? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, okay. yes, always. And um, But yeah, then they, they just kicked me at the right time, huh. which was in the ninth class. Huh. So, 10th and 12th became really serious. Yeah. <laughs> I got <Yeah>. decent grades. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it just went on from there. Honestly, there was nothing planned that I need to do this. But mm -hmm. once I came back from Singapore, uh, started working with Mercedes for the Lux driver and Star Drive. Okay. That went on for eight, nine years. And uh, there, was a, there, was a, um, there was a program in there. It was called Pre-Safe. It's actually a car feature, but we called it a program as like a pre-safe because that showed, showed the main safety features. Okay. So that included some high-speed maneuvers, which I felt that also brushed off my uh, drifting skills. And uh, yeah, it just went on from, I feel that polished my skills a lot, I feel. But it was okay. good fun. Okay. Yeah. What is your earliest memory of being in a car? But And you've always been into cars? Uh, yes. Not into yeah. motorcycles as much? Uh, no, I feel, uh, I just feel too naked around them. Like the air is hitting you from everywhere. I was like, mm, that's a little uncomfortable right here. Mm. But it's nice. Like the thrill of the bike is like, yeah. I have a bike, but... Then I'm on what do you ride? Uh, it's a Hypermotor 939. Okay. So it, it'll be uh, it'll be ridden on a nice sunny day. Okay. I don't want to take it on the rain because I know because you know that that bike's like you don't want to put the front down. It's like but I don't <laughs> really do that. But yeah, it just wants to take you on a ride. Like it's yeah. a little dangerous sometimes. Yeah. But yeah, it's good fun. But yeah, it's been cars all the time. Yeah. So and your earliest memory of a car drive maybe with your dad. Or um. 
So we have a farm from our, from from Chandigarh, which is about fifty uh, minutes. Okay. And uh, five zero. Five zero. Yeah. Ah. So the thing was, me and my brother, younger brother. So we would. Uh, so our granddad would be like, "You guys, you know, guys are ruckus. You guys should stay back. Don't come here." And I was like, "One of those nights." So so we took out the tractor. Ah. And um, so they had, I think, gone out for some reception or something of that sort. So both of us, uh, you know, we had nothing to do. We were kept in the house for the caretakers that make sure these guys are inside. Mr. Dhan Rakho. Yes, <laughs> so the caretakers. Uh, I don't know how we got our way out, but we got to the tractor, and then we took it out, and there was paddy in the fields, and there was all water. Okay. And we got this thing stuck over there. Oh shit! And yeah. we tried our best to get it out. I mean, we would have done something really stupid to get a tractor stuck. But yeah, it was. Uh, I would say the thrill was. Uh, it was good fun. Like, but we were. We tried our best to, you know, do it. We were. We were dumb. Like, we tried to pull it. How old tires. were you back then? This must be around, I think, nine, ten, something of that sort. Fifteen, sixteen. Is some uh, no nine, ten. Nine, ten years old. Uh, I was nine, ten. Ah, so yeah. about fifteen, sixteen oh, years yes, old. Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Okay. So then, um, so yeah, we left it there, and then in the morning the. They knew that we messed up something. Yeah. So first they caught. He tractor here. Where is it? Yeah, night was not good. Night was not good. So so the tractor guy was on leave that day. Okay. So we we thought that you know we are fried. And then they my dad came. Who did this? So my brother looks at me. I look at him. He's like so. I was like I obviously had to take because he's the younger. Younger brother. So like, yes, I was like yeah. Younger brother, go save. Yes, I was like yeah, I did it. So. So he's like, yeah, as a nice. So he got a big lecture on that. Yeah, it was. So, but then we realized that you know, tractor is a lot of fun. Hmm. So then we started doing it like better, 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 better. The moments we came like really close to flipping it, but hmm. it was good fun. And but do was, you st- do stunts with the tractor as well? Uh, I no, <laughs> no, no. Okay. No, I do have people who are really crazy with it. They pop wheelies and they will yeah, stay yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, and they're like, damn crazy. But uh, yeah, so the tractor really started my journey. And then there was one really old Jeep at home, at home, which we, uh, you know, it was like a possession that we were not supposed to touch. But yeah, yeah. Then that, and then then there was the Zen. Zen. The Zen we used to bash around. The classic around, Zen. Like, yeah, yeah. Huh. we used to bash around like yeah. <laughs> that was like, a, you know, that was like I think that taught us. Uh, the limits also probably yeah. and then the then we flipped it sometimes here and yeah. there it was part of the game <laughs> but yeah, it was good fun so you were always yeah. around cars yes. since you were young yes always. i'm sure your dad's also been doing this for a long time is why um he did it while he was in the army okay. so he did it while serving yeah and uh, then he kind of retired from it hmm. and then uh, he didn't develop much interest i guess okay. but it was i mean yeah i mean he has his own you know taste and Yeah. He likes to stick to that. Oh, yeah. lovely! Yeah. So you are doing this professionally. Um, yes, like I mean, if you drifting cat- is professional. Uh, uh, drifting, I mean, I don't know how we categorize professional, but yeah, for me, it's like in a closed area. Circuit. It's cordoned off. There is no people around, and then the competing part is in Thailand because we don't have any competitions happening in the country. So there's one I took part uh, last year. Uh, uh, sorry, last to last year, and then there's uh, one. There are two planned this year by the end of the year. So uh, I have one car, a rally car in Thailand, mm. which I generally go rally, which I'll be leaving on the nineteenth. Mm. Um, that championship is of four rounds, mm. probably. So whenever I go there, I try to get a few laps of the drift car also. And uh, it generally stays. There's no plan to get it here. It stays. I better go fly out, drive, and come back. Mm. So they, so their uh, competition format is very simple, mm. which is why I chose to pick that country. And okay. it's a little, uh, I would say, a little easier to get there okay. versus the other options I had. And uh, the competition over there is not by, um, let's say, power mm. or engine size. Mm. It's by tire size. So if okay. you use a 265, you're on a different category. Huh. If you use a 300 or a 285, you're on a different category. Okay. So it doesn't can, matter what the engine spec is. Yes, you can generate as much as much power you want, huh. but the tire size is what defines your category. Wow. Which I think makes sense because after all, if you have grip, is what you're going to uh, utilize. Correct. If you have a thousand horsepower, if eight hundred horsepower, if you have if you're running a 265 at the back, uh, you're probably going to be spinning it faster or lesser, but by the end of the prime spin you're just going to be having the same amount of grip hmm. as a bigger tire or small tire depending on your category hmm. so okay yeah so i mean it's i feel it's like a good system yeah do you rally in india as well uh, i did a few but not anymore okay yeah. any reason why you left it um 
the thailand uh, system is way easier it, i think it's just because of how easy it it's is it's just convenient i feel like okay. everything is good i mean i'm sure systems here are very good as well hmm. but i feel that very convenient and it's hmm. um there are a lot of things here there and you know people have their own thing and like But I find that convenient. Yeah, but yeah. do you think Thailand has a better motorsports culture than uh, us? N- I mean, we have sure have developed n- over over. Not years. really, not really. Not really. They all uh, they have access to some real good parts, okay. and they have access to some uh, really good, um, let's say, engines and rules. Okay. So now, if you want to get a car over there, you can get a half cut car. Yeah. And it can reach uh, you from Japan. in about let's say 5 to 6 so that's what i did with my rally car mm-hmm. so there's a 1.6 which has come from japan is put into my car now mm. so the entire car has come in mm. there was half already mm. so i have everything which in which needs to go into it mm. and it becomes a 1.6 where if you have to do this something over here i mean the government thinks you're doing something really stupid or i don't know why the rules are like that but mm. doesn't make sense to me at least i feel like you know if somebody st- if somebody trying to progress in their sport and they're not doing anything wrong there should be a law or something that that allows them to do that i mean yeah. you don't want to hold somebody back that's also one of the reasons why they say that india doesn't produce so many talent you know talents and everything is here but there's just that we are so controlled that uh, it doesn't go out like i mean yeah. if you're just getting an engine something yes you don't register it but you claim ownership and you don't use it on the road but there are also people who are going to use it but i'm sure they have their own reasons but you know something uh, always can be worked out yeah. if it's done the right way is there any other international competition that you do apart from the thailand uh, rally uh i was also i did a few rallies in canada and us okay. and they were a lot of fun too yeah. like their system was it better are, than thailand oh definitely and definitely. how does that system work so so the so the easiest ones are there uh, they call them like uh, you know they like small stage rally so they'll be like 2 3 kilometers that's it hmm. so you basically oh, that's it? yeah that's it so a rally for 3 kilometers so this is something like their autocross So oh, this is between the autocross and the proper rally. Got it. They have the national championship, huh. but these small. Uh, so they also have autocross in the parking lot, like how we do. But then there is another format, which is this is like two kilometers, three kilometers tops. That's it. Okay. And it'll be in a. It'll be most the ones I've done are on a dirt, hmm. on the dirt track. And then there also could be on the. You have you seen those big side cars with those big spoilers? They yes. only go side. So they, they probably use that track and the mm-hmm. parking make like a three kilometer loop inside the thing. Okay. Uh, for including the parking and the track and everything. So those are really interesting. Hmm. Those are the ones I could do because they were. I mean, you don't need much preparation, less budget. Quickly get there, do your entry and bounce. That, that was like really easy. Okay. So the last time it was in Canada was about for seventy dollars. I got about seven runs. Okay. Uh, so the the thing is that you have to do your four runs before lunch. Okay. And uh, any engine swap anything that's how you that all the rules follow. Sure. So that was really interesting. Like and then in the seventy they give you lunch, they give you pork orders, and they give you place to you know sit and your pit crew can come in and all that. It's like you know and and so the format is something like this that if there are about twenty people, the first five let's say serial number one to five they will they will go marshal. Acha. And the and the six to twenty can go can go participate. Okay. And after that. Um, the ones who are uh, one the ones who are marshaling then the next lot comes in got it so the 6 to 10 come in and the 11 to so basically the 5 6 marshals who are there but there obviously there's a bigger number just giving an example so that so those those people marshal and race at the same time hmm. so generally i feel that's a very good system that you know then nobody chases and then the hmm. uh, you know competitors get to marshal and they obviously they won't want the other ones to get an extra advantage but they are i mean that format was really cool as well yeah. i feel i also think it's a great community building exercise Because um, if yeah, you're not participating, yeah, yeah, you're marshaling, yeah, and absolutely. you're still involved in the sport. Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, people are more into about doing it rather than they are doing it. अरे यार करना पड़ेगा. हाँ. They want to do it themselves, yeah, like which is say. like you know, and, and they encourage like like for example, we had a shifter problem. Hmm. So there's another super guy who was there. He's like, do you want one? I have a spare one. He's like, just out of nowhere, he saw like we three of us were under the car. So just three friend of us, three of us. Sorry. So we were under the car trying to get something out. ये वो नहीं हो रहा. So the bush basically broke. Hmm. So and we were trying to sort that out. So this guy comes and he's like. Like you want the shifter, I have it. And he was in our category also. Like, what a guy is like, sure, why not? Yeah. And uh, he Super. gave us, and we quickly changed it. And I was like, good, good fun. <laughs> Super. So yeah. let's talk about your cars that you use in in racing. Okay. So Thailand, me, what do you ride? What do you so drive? So there's a 1.6 Swift, which I need to go drive for the first time now okay. <laughs> before the rally. Now Swift owners, because of the car. Yeah, it's a fun car actually. Yeah. I feel, uh, um, my opinion, I feel is is got good handling. Like, okay. I mean, at least for that whatever purpose I use it for, is like really, really, really good. Like, yeah. it's good fun. Yeah. And uh, for uh, there's another Safiro A31 with a 2J in it. Okay. Which is about I think seven eight hundred horsepower, depending on the spring gear we use. But it's um, so that's all this stays there. 
So okay. there's a track called Patan Thami Raceway. Okay. So you get your, so you can basically pay rent for about sixty thousand rupees for a year, and you get like a small sixty uh, thousand rupees. Rupees. Okay. So you get the let's say a very small pit, huh. and then you can put your car inside, and you can stack your tires, just bare minimum space, and then you can put your basic tools inside, and everything stays there, and then the track is right there. Hmm. So uh, you can sixty thousand is not bad. Yeah, man. it's not bad actually. I mean, they they will not uh, bother you. You lock your things, and you can take your keys away and everything, but you. You have to inform them when you're coming. Achha. So they also have tra- track limits and timings and everything. All that, all the procedure is there. Sure. But you just need to go inform them and tell them this is the date you'll be coming in, or probably like at least three hours prior, hmm. unless there's an event going on, so that they will block you out. Hmm. Uh, and you can go drive, and that's about it. And there's the fees for the track for the entire day is I think some eight hundred rupees, if I'm not sure. Something full day. Uh, yeah, full day. Yeah, yeah. But this is not the big one. This is the small one. Yeah. This is something like a a little bigger than the skid pad. So if okay. somebody wants to go learn, you can have like at least second, third gear corners in that small, let's say skid pad sort of a thing. Okay. And then if you go to the bigger track, I think it's double the amount. Okay. Yeah, which okay. is decent. And what about US and Canada? What cars are you using? There? Uh, this is an old Subaru. Uh, this is one before the Hawkeye. It's called the Bobble if I'm not mistaken. That one. And then the so that is a two liter turbo. This is not the STI. Okay. Uh, it's the Impreza, and uh, it. It stays there. It doesn't come back. Nothing. It's a off highway car. It's not registered. It's okay. But what I want to do with it is now put a right hand conversion to it. Okay. So it's easy. So that when I'm trying to change gears in my rush, I don't open the door. <laughs> <laughs> so but besides yeah. that, is yeah, it stays there. It doesn't want to come back. So in you've so. got family staying in, in. I have my younger brother staying there. US. Yeah. So he takes care of the cars. Oh, no, no, no. He doesn't. He wants to just take care of his own things. <laughs> this is this is all me. This is all me. This is all my trash which I have to take care of. <laughs> He's like, you come in, I'll give you a place to park, and you can work on it. And get out of the house. Once you do all this, make sure things shut up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Don't okay. follow. So how much have you spent, say, a ballpark figure on racing so far? I don't want to honestly calculate that because hmm. I know that it comes it's out to it comes out to like you know mm, could have done something much better. Than uh, that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, I don't want to calculate honestly. Okay, super. Yeah. So now we'll talk about drifting. Right. How did you start drifting? I I really want to get that answer from See, you. Like, what inspired you? Is that is it a movie? Is it a car? No, no, no. It is, just started like you know. So. Honestly, when it like how it started, started was uh, this was like really way back when I just come from Singapore. Mm. So my friend gets a new E class and he's like not new, like a second hand. Mm. But he's like, "Yar, ye tire to khatam hai ka, achhe se khatam karte hain. Let's go somewhere." Mm. So I didn't know much about <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, let's go, let's go to a spot you know where we yeah. don't lose tires. So we went on like a grass patch, mm. and uh, so we switched to our traction here. What obviously because the open day fit didn't know much, but uh, so we. Just saw the traction and all and everything. So everybody was spinning out. Hmm. Like we had made like a small figure of it. Like we were about eight nine of us. It's like since you know you're not going to be, um, you know tires will obviously wear out. But it's grass, so it's not going to be as bad as on tarmac. So everybody's like wanted to get a go. So on the figure of it, I did not spin out once. So everybody spun out. I was like, hmm. so I trying to figure out. Hmm, maybe you know, I like this. Maybe I want to do this more. And uh, yeah, tried my hand a couple of things, and I think that it just came out well. Like. Even I didn't know this was my plan, but mm. it happened. So it happened, and I enjoyed so it. So the first car that you ever got your drift drift right in yeah. was an E class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what happened after that? Um, a lot of thinking actually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the what do we do? What is it? Is it worth it? And I started reading and all that, and I was like, hmm. then I was like, when I saw the in Singapore, I really had an interest for it. Okay. I didn't really go to watch the F1, but I used to always go watch the drift, drift events. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, uh, this seems like a lot of fun. Why not we, uh, you know, why not I try my hand and let's get something like cheap and let's just do something about it. Um, so yeah, so it actually just uh, started from there, and then the procedure just went on. So I bought this car, the recent Lexus I have, mm. and then it just started getting, 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 getting. It became before it became like a big money pit, and mm. just mm. keep throwing money in it. Uh, uh. <laughs> and it seems like it's getting better, mm. but you feel it's getting better. <laughs> but yeah. by the end of it, it's like five percent spent so much, just got this much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but it's okay. Yeah, before we talk about that car, mm. uh, yeah. and I've heard it from so many people. <laughs> right. I actually, wanna talk to you. All. Uh, I actually want you to say a little bit more yeah. about drifting. Have you right. done or trained, uh, say, got your training done from a professional? Or no, 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 all by myself. All, by all myself. self-taught? Yeah, all by myself. It's just, go- so I, I also feel, you know, somebody can train you. Absolutely. Mm. You can be shown the path, mm. but it is your seat time. It is your, uh, it is your will to do it. Like, you know, I mean, I can be taught, but if I don't want to learn it, it'll be like, my, it's okay, I don't want to, mm. you know, it's like, it's like, it has to be, has to be done by yourself. I mean, if you want to do it by yourself, then I feel you will always find a path. You don't need anybody to, 
you know you obviously need guidance but you don't need anybody to tell you what you're hmm. doing the person like i like uh, the trainer sorry the manager in my not really manager the guy who manages the cars at that track hmm. so he's also a trainer hmm. so uh, you know he and there are a couple of other trainers also hmm. so what i realized in the previous this is where uh, thailand thailand, thailand okay. so previous competition when i realized that these trainers have their own set of uh students hmm. and they don't go to anybody else hmm. so whenever i will have like a long weekend i'll probably just go to thailand drive my car and come back these guys will always be most of the times be there hmm. so uh one of the guys over there is an australian hmm. so that's only guy i could have like a decent conversation with hmm. <laughs> so when i spoke to him i was like because of language as a barrier yeah i mean they are very nice they like speak and they try but you know there is something that lacks some which is okay i mean everybody is gone their thing so i tried i spoke to the australians like what is you know what is like the scene over here what is what is happening like why why are these guys here why is blue blue and why is red and red mm-hmm. he like so these guys don't change their uh, instructors i was like mm, why is that he like you might have a driving style i might have a driving style this guy has a driving style and this works for them mm-hmm. if i learn from this guy and if i learn from that guy and if i learn from this guy i will never be able to put out what i am good at okay so they generally you know stick to one guy who they think is trying to understand their uh think so lot lot of people go yahan se seekh lenge wahan se seekh lenge you know it's i feel that what you feel the best and you think you can do that is probably the best to do like i mean if you think the handbrake works for you then the handbrake works for you if i don't like it means i don't like it i mean okay yeah that that was so um when you first started drifting with the e right uh and to today right. how long has it been oh that was way back I think it's one of those uh, summer breaks I'd come from uh, Singapore hmm. towards the end. I think it must be two thousand ten. So it's been a 11? long time. Oh, it's been a decent long time. Yeah, decent long time. Yeah, dude, yeah. it's been a really yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah. So thirteen yeah. years you've been almost. Doing this. Yeah, yeah. Would you call this your profession or this um, is still your hobby? I would. Uh, what w- would you call yourself? <laughs> like, what is your profession? Um, you mean by like profession, profession? Yes. Oh, we cultivate land. farmers ha acha okay <laughs> yeah that is yeah Garka. yeah got it so uh, and uh, profession i think the yeah, anything that pays you are employed ah. <laughs> as long as you're getting paid you're employed like Love so it. yeah so this so the so this is still of, a hobby this is still a hobby and i do like freelance uh, projects okay like, like the one that you did with mo yeah those will go on well. yeah jk as well then there'll be jk has been a very long story again with about 11 12 years with them super and uh, you know that journey has been fun as well hmm. so uh, yeah i think this i think is since it's become freelance so i think it's become a profession because you're getting paid for it yeah but yeah, yeah but This hobby also, yeah, yeah, and all that hobby money goes into the cars. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I go to US with uh, one backpack, huh. which has my chutney banana sock shoes. That's it, huh. and maybe slippers if I have space. Otherwise, that's it. And then uh, the other two suitcases are only car parts. Wow, that's it. And you got to be very limited because you got to pick and choose what is more needed. Because I mean, <laughs> with all this, then money is never there. Right. It just it just stays there for a bit. It looks nice, and then it goes like that. Yeah. So you got to be picky about you know what's heavy, what's not heavy, how you should get it. And then then they then then the friends come in. Here, take part, leo, yar. Throw some money, leo, yar. And they're like, no, yar, nahi la sakte. Like, yeah, but yeah, that's how it's been working till now. So it was good. So now let's talk about yeah. the car. Okay. Is the, okay. Like, I, I, it's on you. Like, right. talk about the car that you are currently <laughs> drifting in. Right. So this is a GS two hundred two thousand one model. Uh, Lexus. Lexus. So they were on multiple platforms. Hmm. There was also called the Toyota Aristo. Hmm. There was also called the GS three hundred. They were in couple of different variants. Sorry. So the so the US DM never got the turbo edition. Mm. That's what I've studied. Mm. Maybe they have, but mm. they never got the turbo. They got a GE. Mm. The engine comes. There'll be some geek online who will be like, "Absolutely." Are you sure? Whatever comment will you do? I have a bad car. But as far as my study, uh, they only got the GE as a production from the showroom. Mm. But there are a lot of people who swap engines because their mm. block is almost same. So you just put, you know, the turbo variant on it, and that's about it. So the turbo variant is the GTE, mm. which, uh, with what I have studied, was apparently the engine they were supposed to use for the Group B rallying also. Mm. 
When there you was say study, what do you mean by study? Just by internet scrolling and all. Acha. Yeah. Just getting to know. Yeah, the yeah. Just to get to know, like whatever I could gather information about. So this was apparently the engine they were trying to, and then the some program came in, and the super uh, group B category went away, and all that. So this was also in development with that, hmm. uh, because I think Audi was using their five cylinder, which was doing well. So. these guys wanted to do that and also fact that this was uh, you know uh, toyota ha- uh, yamaha had some hand in this hmm. either is tuning or building i was not really sure about it but they had a hand in this so um, so the ge was the non uh, turbo edition which went to us but the car on the other platform is mostly i would say identically same uh, the diff ratio the axle splines and all that is mostly the same only so they also had a v8 edition in this which was the 400 hmm. uh that also went to us but i don't know where else did it go but i have seen it over there so uh they also had a addition in the four wheel drive hmm. so all these were you know since the car was there and us has a lot of kida people doing this and that and there were a lot of modifications to conversion and all that jazz hmm. so parts getting passed from there was pretty decent hmm. but um you know carrying heavy parts is another uh, issue to and you have to be in your price limit and all that hmm. so the engine is what i wanted in a drift car Hmm. So this is a 2J VVTi, uh, 2JZ VVTi GTE, hmm. which uh, stock comes very strong. That's hmm. the reason why I mean I want to use it. And Toyota making a six cylinder is actually very smooth, hmm. um, and it can take a lot of abuse if it's done right. Hmm. Uh, I feel with my car uh, we have abused it decent, hmm. and uh, we take care of it every six eight months. We like. top the engine pan check it everything gaps and all the well lash all the we try to we try to do as much we know about it um we means me and my mac if he is here around others i'll just keep trying to fiddle around with things hmm. and uh, yeah so that engine is very strong as long as you keep it healthy hmm. service on time you chill seals on time you take care of the oil and don't abuse it too much don't set on the limiter too much it hmm. it it stays there like it It's like oh, I would say very bulletproof. Yeah, Japanese engines. Usually yeah, so you know, you just need to take care of it, and it stays there. And yeah. then I would, uh, uh, you know, try and get like uh, my bushes and all changed. This is the initial time. I would try and change the bushes and all. So I uh, read about this company called Fix Engineering, and there's another company called Serial Line. Those guys uh, make some really nice products for this. Like really, really, really nice. Like you put them on and forget about it. Okay. That good. A uh, slightly expensive, but I would say the entire hassle of changing it again, again, again. becomes really 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 easy hmm. so yeah so that i realized that this is the only uh, platform of this engine which is available in the country hmm. and they were not i don't think they were ever sold by toyota or lexus hmm. they were mostly imports hmm. so people did have them here and there and around i got my hand on one so the one we get in the in the japanese market is the jzx 161 which is which comes with the rear steering Hmm. The one which goes to US doesn't come with a rear steering, which is one six zero. So for drifting, rear steering is not recommended. It's okay. better you don't have it. Okay. <laughs> so I had to, you know, fabricate the entire thing. So I had to get the subframe from uh, Russia and then all that knuckles and all. Hmm. So knuckles had to come from US hmm. because since I changed the subframe, hmm. so the steering point had to be changed. So I was don't completely delete it. I mean, you there are ways you can do it, hmm. but I like to keep it OEM, which is I feel the best also. Hmm. So that subframe was changed, and there were a couple of things which were done to it to make it ready. And then things started progressing. For to get my car, I was hunting for about for let's say once I finalized everything that you know I feel this is the engine, this everything, and this is what about it. And and uh, it took me about three odd months to get to this car. Okay. But yeah, once I had it, there was a uh, you know straight to the workshop, change the timing belt, service everything, and then just I just drove it for like about twenty days, like stock. Uh-huh. and then the things started coming in yeah, it was good fun okay yeah. where did you get the car from uh, delhi okay yeah. somebody had it somebody had it okay and Lovely. he thought that there is this car is so trash that i better get it off i was like yes please yeah. <laughs> i will accept your trash <laughs> <laughs> and where did you get the engine from oh so this came with this engine so the, somebody had already done the swap no 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 this comes with a 2jz gte okay. hmm. so multiple platform this was one of the platforms which came to hmm. i think the asian market always had the gte there were also the ge ones but i mean i've seen a couple of them around in the country but i'm guessing they've come from somewhere else or somewhere but cuz they're not non turbo yeah. and they right hand drive so i'm sure must be some some country must be getting them in the in asia correct uh, hmm. this is a very rare car um in the country yeah. you mean uh, i've seen a handful of them around i, mean, I won't say like handful handful there'll be a bunch load of them around but 
maybe 50 maybe 100 hmm. i think they were all imported what hmm. i feel i don't think toyota alexa is not there for sure because they've recently come in uh so i feel they were imported most of them were as imports and uh, people have had them here there i mean they i do get to you know see them ki abhi mere paas hi hai this there are couple of them in pune in fact That's, yeah, yeah two of them okay yeah so you got this when which year was uh, this? 19 19 so it's yes. been about 4 years yes and what are the changes that you have done to the car um besides the logo mostly everything <laughs> just take me through it so there's a long list to it yes. so this comes with two turbos okay uh, we've changed that to a single turbo we're running the same stock boost because i don't want to stress the engine out much so i have electronic boost controller i can go higher with that if i want to but with the stock setting is doing what it's supposed to do so i'm more than happy with it then we change the entire cooling we change the cold side to a better intercooler the hot side's got a better, better turbo manifold and a few supporting mods to it um then the head is stock uh, intake's a stock uh, then the ecm runs a hks fcon v pro which also comes with a adapter harness so might you know who's in thailand so mm. all i told him that i really want this engine to survive less at least 10 years mm. please make sure it you don't keep a tune which is not aggressive at all mm. yes i need the single turbo and everything but let's keep it to a point where you know if i need to raise the boost sometimes we have an option but i want to run it to low boost okay. he's like oh, sure possible he's like you won't be able to do this i'm like please let's just let it be whatever it is i want to just so he's according to me he's only figured the ignition and the fueling okay so he's just messed with that and is doing whatever it does there is no cold start problem there is nothing of that sort it starts and goes that's all i mean uh is doing what is supposed to do so the so that basically small ecm takes care of things mm-hmm. um then uh, on the gearbox so these cars also only came in automatic ooh okay they were only in automatic the only disadvantage with that i feel is that so a lot of the cars which come in manual and automatic the manual where the pedal goes the manual pedal okay it'll always have a cut out right. like it'll be there but there'll be like a impression of it like two bolts or three bolts hmm. and there'll be like a cylinder matlab jagah hai uski but you can cut it off with whatever you want if you want to do a manual like you don't want to like you know a lot of these three series also hmm. they do have like a manual ka cut out is there hmm. like but we don't get the manual in the country so it's blocked off hmm. so for us to that entire placement was again a new level of r&d how do you want to do it up and down and then the and then the putting the gear box was not so difficult i mean if if you don't count the let's say the pedal installation and the welding and all that fabrication for it you can probably do it in like i would say like 4 hours 5 hours in okay. in your sorted as long as you have the parts like the shaft and the gearbox clutch sleeve all that you feel okay. have all that just for the fabrication we took like a day because hmm. we wanted to just get it right and the placement was not coming in so then so we had put it in so that, that had stock seats so then i realized yeah this is never going to run on stock seats so then i got another seat got it fit it to that then we changed slightly and uh, yeah so that fabrication has to be right i mean you mm. have to just open the entire dash and then you put the dash back you you know just put like one two tacks on it and then you you know change it and you see that then yeah it was done like that took us like a day to do it okay and um, and all of this happened where Delhi? in chandigarh my house chandigarh okay in my house okay yeah so everything is at my house and wow. i do everything right there simple yeah. so i can go to bed whenever i want and yeah. come and work <laughs> whenever i want right. convenience right. is very important yeah. Yeah. so yeah so that was all done in the drive eh? and uh, just this is when my mom and dad realized hmm you're bahut gun dal raha hai tu yahan pe i was like i was like hmm welcome to a new beginning <laughs> this is going to continue now nice. so yeah i was uh, so i was uh, Yeah, it was uh, that's what really you know it was this that simple honestly. Okay. Uh, the only minus point is that you don't get like a cut out for the thing, okay. and you have to do everything on your own. And uh, once you get it right, is damn simple. So, but we so we, so right now with that gearbox, it's got a R one five four gearbox with I think the Mark two or the Mark three one of those Supras had it. Hmm. So I uh, so then we were running a, a six puck competition clutch. with that clutch we realized that you know uh, putting the slave cylinder outside is heating up a lot of things because it's close to the turbo mm. so then we uh, got another innova 5x8 valve clutch so we put it inside and it didn't really work well with us because the things i mean it was too cramped inside uh we realized that you know we need to do something so we changed the entire same system uh, so now we are now on a hks uh, triple plate clutch mm. which is very heavy it's like leg press yeah. like if you don't go to the gym you will start yeah. feeling yeah. you know you start getting cramps in legs like yeah. really really heavy yeah. so uh 
but yeah it's, it it works well yeah. i at least know that like uh, before the before the clutch i used to use i every let's say third outing i had to bleed it change something or that so so now i feel just with this rnd we have come down upon that this is what works for us like this is what is needed like hmm. it does the job yeah. like i don't know if i want to upgrade or not but it's yeah. doing the job like yeah. is there so you know rohan right rohan also has a supra okay uh, i think i've seen one of those videos goro was driving it on the that's, track that's right yeah. so yeah. he has a supra right and one of uh, and i think during underground five is a white one the white one. i think i saw that video ha huh. rakesh had posted it ha huh. yeah, so i, I was there yeah. with him oh, okay. so on the way back he's like tu chala ha <laughs> and he's also running stage 3 clutch oh, everything okay. stage 3 okay. everything so okay. the clutch is also stage 3 right three. right dude that clutch is <laughs> so heavy so you, heavy wait you you come from underground no ha huh. just and just get to my clutch ha huh. and i'll i'll tell you what you need to do ha huh. Yeah, but Dude, just just you... warm up. But warm up your leg before. Huh? I don't yeah. want you having a cramp and walking, ah, limping out of. I stalled it twice. <laughs> okay. And the third attempt, hmm. it like went bogged and went boop 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 <laughs> boop when it started. I drove for like three hundred meters. I'm <laughs> like, bro, no, you guys. I will sit in the cold driver seat and make videos or whatever. We couldn't chill anyway. But I know, yeah. I, I know where you're coming from yeah. and the kind of work that. But you're he's also to... running a very big turbo, right? Because I I figure from the video which got her posted, yeah. I I mean I guessed it like maybe yeah. it's like a big turbo because the you should come to office like. and maybe see it one day. Oh, okay. Maybe get the get get your yeah. I don't know if it's your car is road legal. It is road legal. It is road legal. Yeah, yeah absolutely okay. road legal. Ha, so But just that it car. is so low ha. that I just feel that it'll probably uh, that's everywhere. No, it'll probably stay in one of the potholes only, <laughs> or probably see some one of the <laughs> speed breakers and like आगे दक्कन मारो पीछे से मारो so yeah. yeah. No, but yeah. once uh, once. You should drop by to office. Yeah, absolutely. Because you will absolutely. get to see Supra. Yeah. I just want to conclude this yeah. podcast yeah. with some interesting th- thoughts from you. Yeah. You know, you've seen drifting from 2010. Yeah. It's been a good 14 years since you've been doing. Decent. Decent. Yes. Have you seen any change in the culture? Um. And where do you think drifting is going to be? In India. Yeah. Oh, it's growing. Definitely growing. Okay. I have so many people who you know you. So the recent trend with people is they're buying the compressors, the two zero three and two zero four, which I think were in a very limited amount in the country. They came as manuals, hmm. which I think is a decent platform to start with. To, honestly, compressors. Yeah, okay. so it's a two liter uh, four cylinder hmm. uh, supercharged engine, hmm. and it comes in manual. Hmm. And uh, being a German build, I'm sure it takes a decent amount of abuse also. Uh, there's a, a recent friend of mine who picked it up and I drove it. Two zero four. I was like, "Dude, this is not bad at all for a practice car." I mean, to take my car out, it is. Uh, I feel it's a hassle. Like I don't really drive it in the city at all, but to have a practice car, I would definitely pick something like that. Okay. Uh, it is very easy to, uh, you know, uh, mod and uh, I wouldn't say parts, but yeah. you can mod and it's cheap. I think it's also them. easily available in the second hand market. uh not so much okay uh, because of because of this <laughs> because everybody wants it now yeah oh wow yeah and they're going high in price, prices also hmm. but yeah it's a uh, it's a good car to start with somebody who wants to get the hang of it hmm. and who wants to get the flavor key yes is it worth the effort or am i good at it or not and you can sell it off like you don't have to like hang on to it like you bahut acha car hai it's not i don't feel it's like a collector's car but it sure is a good platform to start with uh besides the 3 series which never came in the manual You will definitely need a manual, uh, you know, for clutch kicks. And if you think you're running out of power band or boost, and you just kick the uh, kick the clutch, and then it comes back into band. Mm. So that way, yes, uh, it's a good car to start with, and uh, you can work your way up. I believe in the same chassis they had the AMGs, which were the V8s. I think so. And, and I don't know how easy it is to put the one in the same chassis because I'm sure if it's an AMG, everything must be different. Just the yeah, badging yeah. would be same. Uh, but if it came, so it came. I'm sure it must be decently strong, also. So you think drif- drifting culture is growing? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. It will grow. Uh, I have not uh, on the FMSCI um, website seen anything for drifting as of now. Hmm. But I'm sure they'll also look into this and you know come up with something by rules and everything, and it'll it'll definitely grow okay. because um, every sport has their ups and downs. This uh, is a very spectator sport. Hmm. and uh, you know like racing you f- see people going down it's only the driver and the teams understand the amount of effort and anything for a spec for a spectator is like kon aage hai but they don't realize so much effort is going into yeah. the thing like yeah. you know here it is like you you're off your it looks like you're out of control but you inside know that you're in control mm. and i feel that it looks like it just looks really you know fancy like mm. real some you know i i also feel you're in 
such a sweet spot yeah because you do your jk tire thing yeah. you are uh, physically available at events with right. your lexus and right you're still at the forefront of the drifting culture in right. india because i personally do not know anybody else right who's a part of the drifting community but the kind of visibility that you have right now right i think you have a great opportunity to <laughs> introduce people to the world of drifting yeah. and maybe sort of lead it in some way is right. my personal feeling yeah i hope it grows and you know uh, there is there is um, there's a event called drift masters hmm. so the same people do a, a let's say a, is something like a world cup for drifting hmm. and i hope uh, you know at least fmici uh, you know tries to recognize that and they have athletes going on to that where you know at least we can get recognized as a country that yes this sport is definitely live in the country and you know we've got a decent amount of uh, skill here talent here which can uh, take on the big people is is no big deal honestly hmm. like i'll just give an example when i was um, drifting in thailand last last year so the car that time i did not have this car so i was driving a s13 uh, sr20 which was a 2 liter uh, hks built motor hmm. uh, that car was producing about 450 ish horsepower 480 450 something that sort everybody on the other hand was over 7 800 horsepower wow but we are, like i guess said we were on the 265 tire hmm. and so were they hmm. um, so with drifting you have zones and you have boxes where you have to be in with style and speed hmm. so that's where you basically get points hmm. so when i realized that this car is not really like, it so was drifting is a point based absolutely race absolutely. not a race but an event yeah it's like a points based run hmm. so i realized that this car is i mean it is it has competition like you you can compete in it but if i have to get to the top level it when i'm chasing somebody that guy is going to pull out a lead from me hmm. so my only point was to hit my zones and my boxes absolutely on point so let's say from top 64 i made it to 32 to 80 uh, to 16 hmm. and then to Eight. top 10 ha huh. so uh, i feel with that less horsepower if i could just get to you know at top 10 with my zones uh, it is not Uh, really about power hmm. it is about how you hit the boxes right how hmm. much precision you get into there and hmm. that's where you get points from hmm. so this guy who had uh, given me the car he's like you know we didn't we had no hopes that this car is ever, ever even going to cross top 32 yeah he's like but since you know we were on a short time like covid was on and there were so many things and i was like yaar ye to karna hi hai jo mujhe this i've been eyeing this competition i really need to get there So got then everything sorted and everything happened and then uh, suddenly realized that you know this car is not that uh, but I was like you know we'll give it a best I mean mm. since we are here so the point is that you don't need so much power to do things mm. you have to be precise and you need to be in the zones and the boxes it's just not about donuts mm. I don't think donuts is drifting no, that's not, a yeah. donut like no. that's donut donut yeah. drifting is you know you carry speed to corners and you flow it should be like you know I feel it's like like a wave like you know yeah. your tail goes out comes back goes yeah. out comes yeah. back it should yeah. be like you know it should be like a flow yeah. like it should, shouldn't be like jumpy jumpy that's not how it's supposed to be where do you finish in that event by the 10th way? 10th okay yeah, top from 10. 64 to which I which I feel was you know I feel that with whatever we did I feel that you know great job we accomplished yeah. we what Super. we definitely more than what i expected but yeah. yeah so again so that's what happened the person who was so when in your, so when you compete after 32 then you are competing with your within you competing with another competitor with two cars at the same run mm. so with qualifying there's only one single car and they take your points and then they place you accordingly mm. so with 32 you might get a competitor you might not but top 16 you will definitely have somebody with you running parallel so my my lead, so luckily i was on the lead run so my lead run was really really good on the chase run this guy gapped me like six cars six cars <laughs> yeah yeah this guy was running a v8 twin turbo was like mm, see you bye bye buddy yeah. <laughs> i'll probably yeah. i'll probably see you <laughs> next year <laughs> that was that bad I was like yeah a little disappointing but you know i gave it whatever i could with whatever we had yeah. so the guy who had entered the car he is really happy with the thing he's like yeah. are you did really well so he didn't charge me for that day of competition time that's amazing yeah so yeah. four four tires we use he's like koi baat nahi yaar you did your best so top 10 a gaya yeah yeah bahut a gaya gaadi ke upar acha lag raha so yeah so he still there he's also an instructor okay. and he's uh, won the championship four times over there sure and uh, he's like if you ever want to come your friends want to come you want to do like a thing and we'll probably figure out a deal I was like yeah, that's not bad so he's got like a school mm. and he's not bad at all he charges about 85000 mm. for the day mm. um, rupees rupees right. uh, and including everything 
Okay. That's your teaching, uh, logistics, fuel, tires. Max. What do you mean logistic? You car transfer from his workshop. Okay. For his car max over there. For his setup. Okay. Uh, with them pit access to track access to okay. everything he has everything in that eighty five. Hmm. So he will uh, you know teach you also. But this the only sad part is this is only for six hours. Hmm. Which I feel some jisi ko seekna he will do it in probably one or two hours also. After that is only seat time. Hmm. Is this there's a limit where you can teach somebody or after that you have to do it by yourself only. Hmm. So uh, I think his guys got his school is like really really you know good and then he works this uh, he'll work he'll always work out a deal with you so but i told him was ss i like nah yaar i can't do this and like listen if i have somebody who wants to seriously learn i can obviously advise you as if you really want to go uh and he's like yeah so okay so let's do an 85 i was like i like i'll put you through the guy you please speak to him hmm. this is not my thing and then okay. that's better that way Super. so call of people who ask me also the duties are like yeah i don't have a space hmm. i don't have cars i mean i would love to but yeah. if that i was wanna, actually my next question have yeah. you ever thought about starting i would school? want to do it i want to do want to do it properly i don't want to teach somebody on the street i don't want to teach somebody on a parking lot i want to do it proper proper like you know somebody who comes do you have plans um yeah if i you know Something falls from the top, so the big bag of money that I might not. <laughs> Absolutely, I sure. would. Yeah, but yeah, it, you know, I want to do like proper. Let's make like a different. Like, let, let's make like a small track, less like a kilometer. That's good enough for somebody to learn. You know, somebody wants to get professional. This you'll obviously have to go somewhere get a better car because we are never going to get those in the country. We never going to get those chances in the country. So, somebody wants to do this, he will definitely have to step out. But for your, let's say, platform to start with, let's say, baby steps always can be taught over here. I really wish that somebody who's listening to this podcast <laughs> is crazy enough to yeah. spread the word and yeah. somewhere someone yeah. will Guess give it, you yeah. a call and yeah. say dude we have a track let's absolutely, do this Absolutely absolutely so and I think that'll be the best case scenario Yeah absolutely so I I know there's one event happening in Bombay I think Bad Boy Drifts uh, those guys are doing it but I think they've uh, rented the track out uh, Raymond's track I think so mm. yeah they also have something going on mm. uh, I haven't seen their program I haven't gone through it but Yeah, hey, I just scrolled through the page. It came up that uh, so I think they're also teaching, but I don't know how, uh, you know how their program runs and how things are because I've never gone to the school. I've never really paid attention to it because there's so much going on. But yeah, I mean there are things happening in the country. Sure, there is. Uh, so there is a little buzz around for drifting. A lot of people want to do it because it's. Uh, like I said, is like more spectator friendly. Everybody gets to know that you know this is, and you're. It looks like you're out of control, but you're in control. control. Like that's yeah. that's, that's that's such a great line, no? That you're, you're out of control, <laughs> but you're still in control. That, that's what I feel when I'm inside the car. Yeah, that's amazing, man. <laughs> I've had the opportunity to sit with you in one of the. Oh yeah, the balloons at yeah, yeah. JK yeah, Tire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, you know, Power Drift is yeah. is a is a platform or a publication yeah. that caters to a lot of enthusiasts, and right. a lot of these enthusiasts are also young, right. and they love listening to people who are invested in motorsports. And right. I'm sure they are listening to you as yeah, well. Yeah, okay, so I think one final message to the enthusiasts out there: um, do it right and do it proper. Hmm. Don't find a shortcut. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a, sweet, a sweet, yeah, short yeah, message. Just, just don't. Uh, I mean, uh, nothing comes easy. Yeah. You have to struggle to get it, yeah. and the more difficult it is, the more better it gets. So just hang in there, yeah. and it is always going to turn out good. Super man, yeah. it was a great, great <laughs> chat with you. Uh, yeah. I think what you should do is just give out your Instagram handle. Oh, it's Sanam dot Sikhon. Sanam S A N A M dot S S E K H O N. Yeah, you can yes. follow Sanam on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. uh, thanks for coming here, yes. man. Thanks it for was, being a part of the Power Drift podcast. Super fun. It was super. Yeah, well, I would love to have you again. Yeah, why not? Uh, absolutely, and absolutely. We, we, Talk yeah. some more. Yeah, about we should drifting. we should probably do this by the end of the year. Yeah, when all the ruckus has come down to a conclusion, when Done, we man. have more to talk about. Yeah, super. Yeah, yeah. thank you once again. Some thank problem. you for watching the Power Drift podcast. Uh, yeah. Just to remind you, we are there on all podcasting platforms, and of course in the video format on YouTube. If you have any more questions for Sanam, then yes. you can type that in the comment section, or you can DM him at the rate Sanam dot Seko. He's already given yes. it out. Uh, see you.